Cool. So thanks again for everyone for tuning in this evening. Um, so my name's Jared. I'm from Recycle Right. And here, at, well, Recycle Right is the education arm of Resource Recovery Group. Um, so here at Resource Recovery Group and Recycle Right, we as an organization are participating in Plastic Free July. Um, and we thought, um, given that we're participating in Plastic Free July, we would like to hold a webinar um, focusing or giving an overview about Plastic Free July, but also covering the single use plastic ban um, and also um, helping businesses and cafes make that transition away from single use plastics um, into using reusables and compostable products as well. Um, so we've got a, a really great lineup of um, guests tonight that will be presenting. Um, we've got Rebecca Prince who is from Plastic Free July. Um, we've also got Bree and Lisa from WA Plastic Free. Um, we've also got Lawrence from Renown, um, which is a reusable cup network. And we've also got um, Sandro Puka, who will be joining eventually, which is having some tech issues earlier. Um, but he is from Social Manor, which is a cafe in Vic Park. Um, and they have switched, switched over from single use plastics to um, using reusables and compostable products. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the way um, we'll be running this webinar is we'll have our guests do their presentation and then we've allowed time at the end for um, questions and, and discussion. But during the presentations, feel free to, to type in any questions that you might have um, and we'll get to them at the end as well. Cool. So I'm going to hand it over to Rebecca. Um, thank you very much, Jared, and thank you. Um... Oh, you! I think you've just switched yourself on mute. Uh, yeah. Um, look, yeah, just saying thanks to everyone for for their time tonight. Um, I feel a little bit of imposter syndrome um, looking at the faces and the names on this call because I think there's um, there's a lot of people who know a lot about tackling uh, single-use plastics and our disposable throwaway culture um, in in on this call tonight. Um, I think many of you know way more than me, but I'll just get, I guess for those of you who haven't kind of heard, um, don't know the Plastic Free July story and how, I guess what what we do uh, fits into this bigger picture of, of plastic pollution and, and plastic waste. I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes, I guess, sharing that story and would just like to start by acknowledging that uh, I'm speaking this evening from Wajat Nyunga Buja and pay my respect to the Aboriginal custodians of this land because at the end of the day I think what we all want to do in our in our work and, and in our interest of people on this call you wouldn't be here today if you would not want to leave behind this Buja this country in a um in a, in a better place than what we're going to be doing if we keep using single-use plastics um, and other resources in, in the way that we are. So for those of you who don't know, Plastic Free July started here in WA in 2011. It's a global social movement now, but I... I really feel that what we do here in this place is increasingly starting to lead, lead the country and also leading the world in lots of ways as we tackle the single use plastics waste and pollution problem. Um, WA is now at the, uh, at the top of WWF Australia's plastic scorecard for our action on plastic the bag ban containers for change and now these bans on single use plastics. And I guess what we're really interested in doing as we start to have these bans on single use plastic and this great, you know, 98% of, of West Australians are now supporting action on single use plastics. 
what are we going to replace them with? Um, and I think this is a really important moment in time to be tackling this issue, to be looking at the alternatives, in particular to be focusing on reuse because I know that other states in, in Australia, I know that Queensland um, and the ACT are watching WA particularly closely at the moment. And if we can't get it right, uh, not that get it right, um, that, that's, that's a big challenge. Um, what we do is gonna make a difference and I think it's gonna set the precedent for what other states do. So we know that um, in Australia now, single use plastics are the number one single use item sorry, single-use coffee cups um, are the number one single-use item used in Australia each year. Uh, we're using 1.84 billion nationally, which on a population basis is 190 million in WA. And we're really keen at the Plastic Free Foundation to see the um, with this upcoming ban and whatever that looks like, not to be replacing 190 million single-use coffee cups that are paper lined with plastic and plastic lids, then replaced with 190 million compostable, bio, eco-friendly cups that are still going to end up in landfill or litter. And, you know, we've, we've just been... Um, Working on our final newsletter for Plastic Free July, we're talking about how on Thursday, the 28th is Earth Overshoot Day. So that's when we've used all of the resources that the planet can produce in a year, the water, the trees, etc. We're going to have used that by the 28th of July. So we know we're now using 1.7, the resources of 1.7 planet Earths globally. But here in Australia, that's for, for planet Earth. So I think that the single use plastics issue and the plastic pollution problem has been really important um, in getting people engaged in this issue. But we need to make sure we're not just trading. And I'm not telling anyone in this room uh, on this call anyone anything you don't know here, but it's it's really important that we that we make sure as, as, as the government is introducing this legislation, that reuse is at front and centre. And it was interesting at our launch, when we launched our new Choose to Up Cup initiative on Saturday, and I must acknowledge um, Ada from the wonderful Palapa Cafe in Fremantle, who's on this call tonight for hosting that event. And I was standing there, we had a display afterwards at, at Fremantle Library and the minister was looking all at these bio cups and was saying, but that's all okay because they're all going to get composted, aren't they? And we had to say, well, actually it depends where they end up. Uh, are they going to public place bins? What's going to happen to them? Are those facilities actually set up to just... Um, to just process food and garden organics or are they processing compostable packaging as as well so um yeah so the jared's asked me to kind of give you that overview what we're doing the problem with single-use plastics and i'm really excited to see like um uh, uh, at, at um palapa in fremantle there's 15 cafes in frio that are taking part in a cup exchange scheme. I know Lawrence and, and Reno, you know, you're in a heap of other cafes and um, Plastic Free Places is working with a number of other businesses in that state, in this state. We're really keen, I'll just if I can just share my screen for a moment through this. Um, challenge that we're running this week, the Choose to Up Cup Challenge. It's really focusing on reuse through those three simple actions of bring, bring your own cup, borrow one from a cup exchange scheme or sit 
and um, and stay. So they're the three actions that we're we're focusing on uh, with the reusables. We've got information there on mug libraries, on cup exchange schemes, on how to talk to your cafes, could talk to their staff. We've worked with WWF to uh, on a policy paper, looking at what are the policies around the world that are actually making a difference. And it's interesting that, that it, you know, how important it is to add a, a disincentive, um, such as a, 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 a levy or banning single use for dine-in where there's dishwashing facilities. And um, we've got a bunch of other resources there, such as posters and um, and social media assets. So look, you know, together, I think on this issue, we're greater, you know, the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. We know, you know, I know from seeing the names on this um, screen now that you're the ones that are out there talking to cafes or, or running cafes um, and, and making a difference. And we would love to stay in touch and hear people's stories and share those to acknowledge the work that you're doing, but also to inspire other people around the world that are making a difference. So we would love you to join us. We'd love to share your stories um, and and learn as well because I don't think we know all of the answers, um, but I think together we can make a difference and turn the tide on plastic waste. So thanks for the opportunity. Great, thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, all right, so we're gonna keep it moving. So we're gonna move on to Bree and Lisa from WA Plastic Free. Thanks so much, Jared. So I'm just going to do, a, um, I'm Bree, this is Lisa. We work with WA Plastic Free. I'll talk a little bit more about what we do in a moment, but I just, for the benefit, because this webinar is being recorded, just for the benefit of anybody watching now and in the future, I just wanna do a quick overview of the ban. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, am I just going to go on here? Am I screen sharing? Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Hopefully you're seeing that. Okay. So just it's just really really quick a quick overview. Um, many most of us certainly on this webinar. And, and perhaps future people will have already heard about the um, WA Plastics ban. Just to give um, a quick overview, um, I'd like to just let you know about what's current. So on the 1st of July, 2022, the WA government banned a number of single use plastics, plastic items. On the 1st of July, these items included any plastic shopping bag with handles. So that's of any, that's important to, to note, that's of any thickness. It's irrelevant what thickness it is, it's now banned. Disposable plastic straws and stirrers. Disposable plastic cutlery, and this includes bioplastic. Disposable plastic plates, disposable plastic bowls, and disposable plastic food containers. And you'll note there the brackets where it says without lids. This particular element is important and it because it allows for people for, this is what we call a rolling ban so there will be we we have it we, we're very very confident we have a um, close relationship with the department with the department with DEWA we know that the, there will be further bans coming and I'll talk a little about that in a moment but at the moment bowls and food containers um, are, are not part of the ban if they have a lid and this is important particularly in our work um, when we're working with businesses to help them to understand what's in the ban and, and become compliant. The ban from the 1st of July also includes expanded polystyrene food containers and trays, very, very important. And from the 1st of October, this will the ban will also expand to include cold cups, uh, sorry, clear cups that are used for cold drinks. Um, and, and all plastic cups, but the clear cups in particular are, are going to be um, require some, some big change for cafes and food retailers 
because this is um, a big part, a big issue, big change for them. So um, that's the first stage of the ban. The second stage of the ban um, will we'll begin rolling out on the 1st of January 2023. And we just want to make particular, um, a particular point here that there's a, there is information, it's all live and um, it's been put out there by the state government that this will include single-use coffee cups and lids. However, it is important to make note here that that has not been, how that's going to look has not yet been determined. They are still in consultancy stages. And I spoke with the department today and Rebecca um, made mention of this um, when she spoke. It, it, it's very, the Australia is looking at, the rest of Australia is looking at WA and, I, and I, would, I would anticipate the world as well because we are very much leading in, in regard to bans. But it is, we are taking, we are in a consultancy phase. So this is very much being determined at the moment. How the coffee cup um, changes for in January are going to look is not yet determined. Um, so I think that's important. I'm just going to come off sharing now. I'm going to go into a different screen. Okay, so that's just um, a little bit of an overview about the ban just making sure that we're all on the same page and understand what's happening. There will be future bans as well. That is definitely um, definitely been uh, made clear to us, but at, um, how they will look is yet to be determined. So as I mentioned, Lisa and I work for WA Plastic Free and we're part of the Plastic Free Places program. Um, we are part of a broader group known as the Boomerang Alliance, and we are the peak community not-for-profit organisation working on waste minimisation and recycling in Australia. We were formed in 2003 and we research key issues, develop policy, undertake education and campaign for best practice laws and programs by government and business. Plastic Free Places which is the program that Lisa and I work under, is the hands-on element of our organisation. It's a behaviour change program that works directly with food retailers, events, markets and other organisations to assist them to switch away from single-use plastics to better alternatives, such as reusables, which is our preferred option, or certified compostable um, items. And I'm going to come back and talk about that. Um, the, um, the alternatives. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. We work with food retailers. Where we, where we differ from other sustainable cafe initiatives is the way that we do that. We work directly with business owners per, in person in a coaching consultancy capacity. Our program offers targeted advice that leads to lasting and empowering change for businesses, for business owners and their staff. Our coordinators, of which Lisa and I um, are one, uh, from, from across Australia, have a wealth of knowledge and experience. We also have a dedicated research and communications team that sit behind the scenes supporting us. Just want to talk a little bit about the way that we, the way that our um, our actual program works. So we'll be you businesses sign up to our program, and that's a simple, simply just going onto our website waplasticfree.org forward slash join. It's a simple form. You sign up, that comes through to us, and then we'll then make contact with the business to arrange a time that's suitable for them to come out and sit down with them in person. And what we do is we'll, we'll look at their, their business because there's so many unique businesses. It's not a one size fits all. And we work out the best solution for their situation. We're basically waste consultants that specialise in hospitality. We utilise a participant's existing supply chain. This is very, very important that we do that. We're not looking to move anybody away where possible to make the transition as smooth as possible for that business. We work on implementing waste avoidance and reusable systems first and foremost. For all single-use options, we only recommend certified compostable products and have specific steps for water bottles. Now, water bottles is not included in the ban, but I'm noting that here because I want it to be known that when businesses work with WA Plastic Free, when they sign up to become a member, 
we are uh, we work with them to become ban compliant but we take them much further than the ban our our goal is really to eliminate single use plastics altogether so we go beyond the ban we offer additional champion coaching programs for the more sustainably aware advanced businesses ensuring they strive for continual improvement eliminating takeaway single use plastics is the start of the journey once they reach champion status by eliminating a number of items at the start of our program, we offer them the chance to enrol in the reusable champion so course. Amazing. Yep. And you will, you will get an opportunity, hopefully tonight, to hear from Sandro from Social Manor, who has recently participated in our reusable champion course. And that is a one-on-one -on -one coaching and a PR campaign. So it's an opportunity for us to really promote what that cafe is doing by um, having no single use um, takeaway coffee cups for a whole day. And that's, we lead up to a number of weeks of work that we promote, that's what they're doing. We also have a back of house plastics course, which we offer to our champions, which allows them to work on improving their kitchen operations. So we're a very targeted, tailored program. We are funded by the WA state government um, to support businesses to comply with the ban, but we go way beyond the ban with our members and we offer them a number of benefits of participating in our program. Um, so yeah, that's that's who we are. And we we've, we get a really, really great hit rate with businesses. They, lo they love working with us. Cafes and food retailers of all different shapes and sizes work with us. And with, without exception, they benefit that they talk about the benefits of participating. So it really is not something that people, businesses need to do alone. They can reach out to us and we can assist them. And that's what we're here to do. And we're free, 100% free because of that state government funding. That's it, simple. Amazing, thank you so much, Bri and Lisa. Um, so again, we're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna move on to Lawrence um, at Reno. Thanks, Jared. Um, thanks, Rebecca and Bree. Uh, it's a real honour to be able to present the Reno concept to everybody that's attended and appreciate the opportunity to do so. Um, so my name is Lawrence. I'm the founder of Reno. It's a completely WA based, um, owned, operated, run, family operated, um, reusable cup network. We've been going since 2018. Um, and uh, there was a little COVID hiccup in the middle of that, or I guess we're still dealing with that. So there was a huge interest in what we were doing um, up to COVID and then you know, we've taken a little bit of a step back as a society. And so it's really great that we are emerging into uh, now regulatory uh, model as well, where reuse is being really promoted and um, the government's behind that. Um, and so now we're here and we can present what Renome is. So Renome, like I said, is a reusable cup network and basically cafes stock our cups and they, when a customer comes and they want to have a coffee and they don't have their own cup, they can just put a $5 deposit down and use a Renome cup. Um, here. That's with all the... Uh, point of sale material on it. And it's been designed to mimic the way and the existing workflow of a cafe, same size cup um, with a lid and not take too much space, be very easily stackable. Both the cups and lids are very stackable um, and easy to clean. Like for example, they dry upside down quite easily and go in commercial dishwashers and so forth. So our aim was to provide a very easy reusable alternative for cafes and customers um, that didn't cost a lot. So all cafes need to do to get started with Renome is purchase a starter pack and then there's no ongoing fees. They just take the deposits and if they need to top up, they just go back to the Renome website and get some top ups. Um, so rather than costing money, it saves them money and then if people don't return the cups back to that cafe, they have the deposits that they can put towards um, purchasing new, uh, replacement or new cups 
And so it's uh, basically a cost neutral and cost saving proposition. Um, one of, another one of our aims was to, we hear a lot about circular economy in, in this field, but a lot of it is kind of theoretical or does it really happen? So we wanted to prove that it can happen uh, and it does happen. And we wanted to prove it with our model and the way our cups are designed um, and with our extended producer responsibility um, and working with our local manufacturer. So because we make the cups here in Western Australia, uh, we know where the materials come from. Then they're used in cafes, such as Social Manor. Um, and if they had to get damaged, then we can accept the cups back. Um, we're also working with another company in WA where uh, we can take their um, end of life cups back. And then we take that back to our manufacturer and we've semi-recently made uh, a new product from recycled plastics, which is our return boxes, which is just here. So this is uh, recycled plastic here. And we can be completely confident of that it's um, extremely safe, um, food safe, you could say, because it's come from our own, our own plastic, our own network, our own closed loop. Uh, and not only is it being remade into something, it's being remade into something useful that is part of the system. So to begin with, this box is what the cups can come in. So what the delivery box, how you get it. And then it becomes part of the system in the way that customers can drop off cups into that box. So say they bring in um, a used cup and they want to exchange it for a fresh one at Social Manor then they can drop in the used cup in the return box and then just get a fresh one, uh, freshly sanitized from the cafe and ready to go. And that whole exchange is um, cost-free, cost-neutral because they already would have paid a deposit. Um, our aim is to be extremely simple network. So we deliberately are simple, no, no flashy apps, no nothing like that. Uh, pay a $5 deposit and then uh, when you want to cash out of the, like you take the cup back, you can either ask for your refund, the deposit refund, or we also provide um, tokens. So the token, instead you give the cup back, you get a token, you can click that on your key ring and it's a reminder that next time you go back to a Reno partner, you can exchange that token for a cup. So again, no money needs to change hands in that situation. Um, as Bree mentioned, in 1st of October this year, the clear cups are going to be banned, the single use clear cups. So our standard cup is the uh, Renome Orange Cup, but we do have clear cups as well. So come in handy. Just um, the last bit about the workflow. So cafes often tell us that um, they don't have a lot of space. So um, as I mentioned, these cups are easily stackable, um, the lids stackable. The way that it's advertised to customers at point of sale is simply with, with this um, cup talker that fits in the cup. So it can sit alongside the existing offering, so small, medium, large, renome, uh, and then tells them everything they need to know. And so it takes up very little counter space. Um, yeah, lastly, I'll just share my screen for uh, our shop. So as I mentioned, for cafes to get started, it's so easy to get on board and become a renowned partner. Just go and select the pack you'd like. So you can start for as low as $50 with the basic pack. Um, or as I said, you can buy 25 cups or 45 cups with the return box included. And all of those packs include the uh, point of sale staff tokens, um, everything you need to know how to operate the system. And then you get on board with Reno and we support you through 
I'll just stop the share. Um, also, you can go to our website and we have a handy calculator on there that you can see how much you can save in um, what you would have spent on disposable cup costs. So you can get an idea of that. It actually does cost quite a bit to um, provide just single use stuff to, to people. So um, there is that financial incentive for businesses as well. So it can actually save businesses a considerable amount of money. Uh, so that's about it from me, but just to go back to what Rebecca was mentioning about the Up Cup uh, Challenge, um, I attended that webinar uh, last week, I think it was, and I'm very pleased to see that that's being promoted as part of Plastic Free July because that stay, borrow or bring your own um, is just a great message and that really aligns with what Renome is uh, standing by, that, um, yeah, sit in is always the best option. Um, and enjoy Sandro's spoons and um, or borrow a, a Reno. And uh, that's that's it for me. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lawrence. All right. So again, we're going to keep it moving on to Sandro from Social Manor Cafe. Um, so Sandro, you just need to unmute. Hello. Hello. Awesome. I'll, I'll share my screen. I've got that little slide, slide show that I've put together for you. So just give us a second. Okay. Can everyone see that? Yes. Perfect. All right. Over to you, Sandro. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Sandro, Social Manor Cafe. Um, I had the business coming up to four years in December um, and haven't looked back since making that decision and signing the 12-year lease. I can't believe I'm already uh, a quarter into it. Sorry, a third into it, 4 H yeah, a third into it. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, time flies also when you are learning and you are constantly growing, constantly trying to adapt, constantly changing. Um, I've always been conscious of the amount of plastics that the cafe consumes and uses. Um, and I thought I was doing pretty well until the town of Victoria Park uh, launched an incentive. Uh, and this is how I met uh, the lovely people at WA Plastic Free. And I have to say, a lot of people are resisting the changeover. And I find that really. Just I'm, I'm dumbstruck as, as to why, because the the actual transition is, is quite um, it's quite easy. Um, so again, thanks and big ups to uh, Mayor Karen Vernon and the town of Victoria Park for actually launching the, the, the initiative uh, at the beginning, which was about two and a half years ago. So I met the lovely people from WA Plastic Free. Um, it was an initial consultation and we sat down and we showed them all the products that we used. Um, and again, I thought we were doing pretty well until they came back with, um, you know, similar products, uh, but plastic free. At that stage, we were already using um, the art series Biopack um, lids and cups. And then Biopack actually then launched the compostable lids and we made the switch straight away. Um, and then from that, uh, liaising with WA Plastic Free who then actually got us onto Reno, I think. Um, and then they came along and offered us the, the Reno scheme and incentive. Um, and together we achieved plastic free status. So then when legislation changed, um, I think it was CN Doherty at the time uh, requested us if we could do a, a bit of a, um, an interview and we did. Um, and the way she actually did it was actually polarizing. You had asked who was like, yep, this is pretty easy. Um, just got to apply some common sense. There's a range of products out there that you can actually choose from. Uh, and some of them are actually cost effective. And you know, you do have others which are quite uh, at the higher end, depending on how much you're willing to pay. And then um, we had the opposite end, which is like, this is detrimental to my business. I can't survive because of the packaging. How am I supposed to sell this product? Um, but really it's just, it's, it's about taste. It's about um, personal preference and choice. 
And there's always another choice out there. I just think people initially resisted change. So we have now been close to three years plastic free. Um, the products that we switched to, we originally had the uh, Biopack art series, which are fully compostable. Uh, we were using normal card um, boxes for our takeaway containers. For takeaway containers, we were using plastic. Um, for all of our cakes and pastries, we were already using paper bags and boxes. However, they had the plastic window. Um, so we made the switch straight away for the like for like products. Um, so they were the products that we did use. Still haven't found an alternative, but Glad have actually started their eco range in regards to cling film, because um, that's the only product now I buy in. And obviously reusable plastics like uh, ice cream containers for food storage, um, certified food storage containers. Uh, so in terms of actual takeaways, um, we've reduced them right down. So we'll probably go through about a pack of 50 every two to three months because we've uh, purposely spent the money on the more expensive products, uh, but we're getting longevity out of it. Um, so they're the only two products that are still plastic left in the cafe. Uh, sorry, three products, uh, cling film, the gelato containers that we use for storage, and then the takeaway containers uh, that we use again for food storage, but at least we've got longevity out of them. So the way we have encouraged our customers uh, to make the switch to reusable, um, obviously it's, it's, it's an ongoing struggle. Um, Victoria Park in particular has a high demographic of uh, elder, uh, sorry, younger baby boomers slash elder uh, millennials. Um, so change um, for them, you know, that there is a bit of a resistance However, the um, BYO Cup Day that we did with not only Renome um, and WA Plastic Free, we, um, we, we really did change their mindset. And WA Plastic Free were right in regards to this point. It does take 14 days to create new habits. So it was a uh, very intense campaign uh, in conjunction not only with Renome, WA Plastic Free, and also, uh, you know, given the community hub that Social Matter is in, we had the uh, pleasure um, of also collaborating with Urban Revolution Australia, um, which is an eco-friendly shop, uh, a couple of shops up. Uh, so it was nice to get them involved as well. Uh, and Joe's always a laugh to, to, to be around because of her nature. And uh, they set up a little concession stand on the day and we're also plugging them as well. Um, and they actually made some decent coin that day. Um, I think in total, they brought in just within that three hour window, close to $600 in revenue, uh, just by uh, the selling of their keep cups. And they range from all uh, sizes, shapes, colors, uh, different purposes as well. Um, you know, Lawrence, you mentioned the clear cup uh, for cold drinks. They've just launched a, a cold drink 16 ounce because people like well, obviously people like their big gulps, otherwise they wouldn't have bought them in and designed them as a 16 ounce. Um, and they also had a 20 ounce one as well, uh, which is also suitable for food storage if you want to keep like, you know, your leftovers warm for lunch and so forth. So it was nice to have them in the shop. Um, and it really did, um, it really just did capture that sense of community that, we're, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, on top of all that, um, uh, one of my favorite aspects um, is the uh, mug for mug. Uh, so WA Plastic Free were there on the day taking mug shots uh, of people either with their mugs or their keep cups uh, with the hashtag mug shots. Uh, I was promoting as well the, the mug library that we still have and is ongoing. Um, and it is a really good success with uh, local businesses. So instead of using the renomes or uh, you know, the single use, they're opting for a mug uh, because we've told them that they, they don't have to wash it, just bring it in dirty, pick up another uh, mug from the mug library and uh, we'll worry about the washing and the sanitizing. Um, and Lawrence mentioned like, you know, a, a closed loop and, and there it is in, in, in perfect harmony with, with, with our community. Um, but the interesting thing that I actually learned from all this was I thought we were doing as a cafe killer trade on takeaway coffees. And we actually weren't. Our focus is um, what you've mentioned or someone mentioned before, the whole sit down experience. And that's what we're all about at Social Manor is, you know, what we offer and what we provide and the ambience and, you know, the sense of community 
Um, and, you know, coming in and it kind of feels like a, a great big warm hug that mum's just given you. Um, and it was interesting to see when I actually started, because it's something that I never measured, which was the sit down versus takeaway, because I thought takeaway would have, you know, um, had it hands down, but it didn't. People are enjoying the more sit down approach. Um, and to be honest, I actually do prefer that because you get more value for money out of your $4.50 sit down cup of coffee because you, you are actually enjoying the space that we provide and also what we offer as well. So um, to conclude, I did vouch, and I think we're almost due to actually do four. So every quarter, I would actually like to do a, um, you know, ditch the single use uh, in favor for the campaign that we've actually just done with WA Plastic Free. Um, obviously, on their end, they were heavily involved, but this time, this is something that we would like to do on our own bats. Uh, use WA Plastic Free as well as a means, uh, as a platform to, to push and promote. Um, but it's, it's a great incentive, but it's going to take more than 14 days to change people's habits. This is, I think this is going to be an ongoing thing. Um, and if we can get more cafes on the strip to actually do it simultaneously, we'll make more of an impact. Um, I don't know, I've got a few neighbours who have already actively done this, like Brody at Sonda Coffee. Um, in the East Vic Park precinct. But if we can get a few more um, committing to a day that um, we, we, we ditch the single use, I think it'll actually have more of an impact. Um, and Victoria Park has got a great demographic in doing that because we are community orientated. So that's it, that's my steel peeps. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Sandro. Um, great, so, that is the end of all of our presentations now. So we've got another 15 minutes now for, for any questions that anyone has. Um, if anyone would like to take themselves off mute or you want to turn your camera on, or you can type a, a question into the chat, feel free. Yeah, um, can anyone hear me? Hi, yep. Brian. Yeah. Yep. Hey, uh, congratulations. It's um, all very interesting and uh, I'm inspired by uh, all these stories about your endeavours of uh, fixing what is a ma uh, massive problem. Um, so yeah, my name is Brian Smith. I'm from like a little startup business called BioIngenuity. Uh, not much to tell in regards to this space. Uh, we're just doing a lot of research for the moment, um, uh, setting up a business in the Pilba. Um, um, and I guess my question is for Bree. Um, you mentioned certified containers and uh, uh, that are compostable. Um, is, is there a formal process for this, and uh, how how is this achieved? Um, is there a criteria or is there a standard these days uh, to have a, a product that is actually uh, uh, yeah, certified as being compostable? Uh, hi, Brian. Thanks for your for your question. Um, and Lisa, if you want to jump across me at any point, please do. Um, I've just come back from the Pilbara, actually. Um, just been away for the better part of a month up there. So um, um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Much warmer up in the Pilbara than it is down here. Um, look, we are, as I said, we, we are a really large um, uh, organisation in the sense that we're across Australia and we have really stringent criteria. We, um, there are a number, as you are no doubt aware, there are a number of standards, composting standards around the world. Um, within our program, I did mention we have a research team that sit behind the scenes. So Lisa and myself are out at, at working with businesses, but we have people in our team who research um, items. And I'm sure many of you are aware that the space is really dynamic and there's a lot changing and constantly um, new products coming onto the market. Whilst our primary goal is avoidance, like with, with, with dine-in, um, and then when that's not possible, reuse is our, is our next best and one, one that we work heavily with our, um, our members on. If we are recommending an alternative, which is a single-use alternative, it must comply with a stringent set of criteria which we have, which is available actually on our website. 
Um, right. And we only recommend products that meet the um, Australian um, home composting standards. So um, there are industrial composting standards, and that's been mentioned a couple of times, particularly with, with coffee um, cups. Um, but uh, we only recommend products that meet the Australian AS5, AS4. I can't remember the numbers. There's so many numbers. Um, but um, we, we have a team that makes sure that any product that we are recommending is act has actually met that standard. So they can't just be, um, oh, we've applied um, for that, for that um, certification. We, are, we have a database and that exists to help us because there are hundreds of products, um, but our mm -hmm. recommendations must meet those very high. In fact, our standards are the highest in the world. And if I may add, so for example, with the Australian certifications, what it actually means is that this particular product will degrade and will not harm the Australian soil because there are also European standards, for example, American standards. And they are, if there's no other product available in Australia, they are okay, but they're not as good as the Australian standards because, for example, if we're talking about sugarcane containers that are made, made out of sugarcane pulp, they have certain chemicals in them that are called PFAS. You probably, some of you heard about them. And um, a lot of those products that are not certified contain a lot more of these chemicals than are, is okay for actually like human consumption and for composting. So with these standards, we actually ensure that these products are not as damaging to the environment and to what, you know, the compost and then the compost turns into food that we eat. So this is actually, um, you know, uh, compliant with those kind of standards. And not only those chemicals, there's a whole bunch of criteria under the standards. So we recommend the highest standard items first. So based on Australian certifications, if nothing is available, uh, we can then, um, there are other number of international certifications that are also okay. So just, I'll just quickly, um, cause this is quite interesting. Um, there is a second level then because you can, you can uh, ban plastics, but then you can still have troublesome products at the second tier. So there should essentially be some sort of like ISO tick to say, well, look, they, these are what, what we accept here in WA. Because if, if we were to put all these things into a, like mine sites and, and the like, and uh, essentially down the track that we're going to turn everything into compost and use the compost to regenerate, um, you know, the, the, the lands up in the Pilbara, um, I guess what I'm saying is that this may not be possible if if all the mine sites and stuff are just using stuff that are the second level that are really just as bad as plastic. So somewhere along the line, someone's got to say, hey, these ones are no good. You can't use them either. Well, the fact is that, that, that is exactly what, what should happen. That's how, you know, avoiding single use completely will solve this problem with so-called greenwashing, you know, with yeah. the, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but also um, it's the fact that even if the item is compostable, right? Um, when it creates compost, this compost is empty calories. So it's actually not a nutritional compost for the um, for the soil. Mm -hmm. So that's why, even though technically some a problem that we can solve by you know, composting rather than uh, landfill, it still is a le less preferred option than actually implementing reusable and circular systems, which. In places like mine sites, there's a great potential to implement um, reusable circular systems because the people there are you know, there all the time. So they can, mm. yeah, they can return their containers mm. all the time. So uh, there's no need for this single-use packaging if we're talking about bigger picture. Yeah. And the other thing as well, I think that. Um, it is important to know that, that that's what we encourage most. Our, our goal is, is um, avoidance and, re, and reuse. So we, we agree with you. Um, and we do have, like I said, the Boomerang Alliance, which is the um, larger organisation that our program sits underneath. They're at the, the, uh, uh, we have people that sit at the table making at, at these decision-making processes, in, um, offering advice based on, on research. 
So um, the Plastic Free Places program works with um, food retailers, but there is a number of, um, uh, of, a lot of work going on up the line to make sure that the information that's coming through at policy level is, is getting the right information. So that's why I said earlier in the presentation about it's at consultancy level, particularly with regards to cups and lids, they are a major, major waste problem and one that we would like to see eliminated for um, for good. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well done, team. <laughs> Thanks for the Thanks. questions, Brian. Um, did anyone else have any further questions? Feel free to, to type in the chat or if you want to take yourself off mute. And thanks, Shaka, for sending through that link, the home compostable coffee cups. All right, well, there's no further questions. Uh, I think we might wrap this up. So I'd just like to say thanks to all the presenters tonight. Um, we, we managed to get through with Sandra on the, the tech issues. We, we pulled it off, um, which is awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, and thanks for everyone for tuning in um, and attending virtually via Zoom. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank thanks, you. Jared. Well Thank done. You. Thanks, everyone. No worries. Thank so you. yeah, we will put um, a copy of this webinar on our Recycle Right YouTube channel and on the website as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy Thanks, Jared. the rest of your evening. Cheers. You too, buddy. Bye. You See you, everyone. Bye. Bye.